Minister Lindy Wesesulu has in terms of Section 35.1 uh, in the Water Services Act appointed a new interim board for Libele Northern Water effective the 29th of May 2020. A statement from the ministry lists the new appointments and adds that the institutional paralysis and administrative dysfunction of the last board with failed projects worth billions of rand and leaving communities desperate is part of the reason for the change. Now, let's uh, welcome the minister. She joins us now via Skype. A very good morning to you, Minister Zisulu. Morning, morning, Desiree. Let's morning to your viewers. Uh, let's talk about the general state of water boards. Uh, there's about nine of them. Amatola Water Board, Bloom Water, Lepele Northern Water, Mahali's Water, Mklatuze Water, Overberg, Rand Water, Sidibeng Water, and Umgeni Water. Uh, you, you had instituted some work with Advocate Terimu Dao looking into uh, corruption and irregular expenditure. How's that going? Okay, can I just give you... Can you hear me now? Absolutely, we'll hear you clearly. Sorry, Desiree, can you hear me now? Yes, Minister, we can hear you. Yes. I was just asking yes, you about... I, just wanted... I don't know if you heard my first question. Yes, it, it was about uh, the Lipella board. Well, I was asking generally about all the water boards in the country and uh, the processes you've instituted looking into corruption and irregular spending at these boards and how that process is coming along. Okay, I'll give you an overview about the water boards. As you have indicated, there are nine of them. These are historically um, inherited water boards, and we have for some time been looking at how we can restructure them so they respond to the current geographic needs of our people. Uh, it's going to take time, so we are looking at a complete policy over, overview to, in, to ensure that uh, we have regulators that are aligned to particular either provinces or particular areas. Uh, but we, have, we live with what we have now, nine of them. Uh, and then we have what is called water authority, water service authorities. These are the municipalities who then supply water to the individual households. This is what we call reticulation. So this is the chain of people that we deal with. The municipalities are responsible for providing water from source to the individuals in the home, and the water boards are responsible for making sure that they look after the water needs of a particular geographic area. And I am the overall uh, manager of all of this, together with catchment areas, which you might find, especially in the rural areas where they have been historically uh, located. Now, you ask about uh, Libelle Board. Um, when I arrived in this um, environment, one of the first things that I was told by the Minister of Finance is the drastic state uh, of the water department. And as you know, for some reason, for some time, this department has been associated with wasteful expenditure, with corruption, with all of those things that are quite unsavory in relation to how we look after our money. I have no idea how long, how far back it, it extends, possibly 20 years, I don't know, but it has become almost a historic matter that uh, we have had to deal with. Um, I had a handover report from Minister Nguinti, and he gave me a very good briefing of where we are right now. And he had started some process of trying to rationalize and understand and cut down on uh, what it was that uh, he felt was uh, wasteful expenditure. The money that we have been given for this past financial year, we were given almost as a loan because, as the Auditor General indicated to us, we were bankrupt as a department. Uh, so we've had to work very hard to turn the fortunes of water around in such a way that we are able to claim our fair share from the fiscus in order to make sure that we're able to give our people the water that they need and they deserve. So this is 
the general background against which we have been working uh, in this environment. I inherited 161 cases of people on suspension of various levels of investigation, and we have now attended to that immediately and uh, concluded that investigation. You ask about uh, the Libella Board. The Libella Board has been mired in controversy long before I had anything to do with water. Uh, for various reasons, but chief amongst them is their management of the Giani project, which has escalated almost um, 10 times from the original, uh, original uh, calculation. Uh, and water boards are responsible for any construction in their area and the management of the resources in that particular area. So the SIU has already started working on the, what they call corruption in the water board in Libelle, uh, and that is a separate matter. I, I came in, the affairs of Libelle, of Libelle board were not in line with what I expected of a water board with such huge responsibility in a dry area. Limpopo is a very dry area. The people there constantly go without water, and water is a constitutional right. Uh, so I decided I was going to look into this matter, and I have come to the decision that, that um, uh, it is important that we put new blood into the Libella Water Board. Uh, had expired uh, in May, and I gave them I had given them an extension up until May, so their, their tenure has expired. What we have done now is uh, appointed a new board, which has suspended the CEO of Libella Water. Minister, just before we go into the specifics of what your expectations are for this new board, water shortages in Libale and Guyane and most of Limpopo has been a long-running story. What are your deliverables for this new interim board, and when do you hope to appoint a permanent board? Well, the, uh, the process of appointing a permanent board is quite protracted. First, it has to go for public uh, um, advertisement. Secondly, uh, the portfolio committee has to engage with the names of the people who have applied. Uh, then we have to take it to Cabinet, and as you know, Cabinet is not sitting right now. Uh, we have a, a National Command Council, uh, so it will possibly only start when COVID, at, at a point when COVID is at, uh, at level one. Then we will be able to advertise and have a proper board. This is an interim board because we have reached a point where uh, it is not possible for us to continue in the way that we are continuing, especially with the sh extreme shortage of water in in uh, in Limpopo. You do know that the people of uh, around Guyane, right at the outset of my tenure, had complained that they had no water. 182 villages had no water in Guyane. I called the board and asked them what the reason was. And when I didn't understand what they were saying, I asked the chairperson to come himself to address the people of Guyane through your medium, which is SABC, to explain to them why they have no water. Uh, but beyond that, we have uh, also had problems in Mutsi, which is in Limpopo. I went there personally when there was a drought to assure them that we will be providing them with immediate uh, relief and uh, with the necessary resources to deal with the immediate relief. But the situation does not seem to have improved. The people of Limpopo still have not got enough water. And uh, in a time like this uh, with COVID, when everybody is required to wash their hands and water is an absolute necessity, it has become completely untenable, unacceptable, and uh, so we had to change the board. <clears throat> they, their term of office, but we had to find people in the new board who would be sensitive to the needs of the people of Limpopo. You say that the new board uh, fired the CEO, uh, who this very CEO who has now uh, handed in uh, an affidavit uh, accusing you, Minister, of flouting processes 
uh, in terms of procurement. Uh, how is this, how do you hope this process will unfold? And I want to ask you, as a new board, what information did they have at hand to justify their action of uh, uh, firing the CEO, Mr. Phineas Lekhozi? Well, from the report that I got, right from the day on which they were supposed to have uh, had a meeting in the, at the Lepelle uh, uh, board, the building that uh, we occupy as Lepelle board, they were locked out at the instruction of the chair of the, chair, uh, of the CEO. Now, that is the level of uh, arrogance uh, unacceptable to anybody who's employed by the state. He had been informed that there was a new board coming. He needed to meet with them, hand over to them a report on what he has been doing. Instead, he locked down and refused them access. This is a deliberate act of provocation. Uh, this, together with many other things, I have not fully studied the report they have given me, but they have uh, suspended him, and uh, they have now gone to the courts to ensure that they can get access to their own building. Uh, his allegations of me interfering with the processes are so ludicrous, I will not even entertain them. Uh, I suspect perhaps at this point he is panicking to the extent where he's not thinking properly. However, we will allow uh, the new board to settle in because those people need water, like everybody else. It's a, an absolute necessity. So the new board is in place. We also have an administrator there, and uh, we are hoping that things will become uh, normal. Um, and uh, very soon the people there will hopefully uh, see the difference that we put in place. Um, never before has water been more of a necessity than now during the uh, COVID-19 outbreak in South Africa. Uh, government making promises to provide water with all those Jojo tanks been spoken about that will be de delivered to different areas in the country. But now the Minister of Education yesterday that uh, some of the motivation for her reason to postpone the reopening of schools is because some schools still do not have access to water. Why is this the case, uh, Minister? Okay. I don't know why the Minister... No, I think the Minister generally, there is no water in most of our schools. You know that. We still have pet toilets. And about uh, um, six weeks ago, he, she asked me to... When we had come to a decision that perhaps schools uh, should open, and she was very passionate about the fact that students should go back to school. She asked me if we could assist with water uh, and the provision of water, and uh, that we agreed to. Um, I, I have since learned that uh, the, some schools do not have water. I don't think that she's actually blaming us. This is something you've always known. I mean, most of our schools are in the most rural areas with pit toilets and all of that. And the time that uh, she had asked me we were going to assist. We were not going to take over the provision of water, but we were going to assist with the provision of water. The money uh, that would be that would be required to provide these tanks and the water to the areas was only received by my department on Friday. Today is Tuesday. So it would not have been possible to cover most of the areas, or any of the areas, without the necessary resources. Uh, I believe that my CEO for Rent Water has gone public to explain what the situation is, and we will, uh, I will um, defer to him to explain, because I don't deal with the financials and the deliveries. I deal with the policy. The policy has been laid down. We will assist them. But there was no money from the Department of Education to provide us with the resources to take water to the areas that is needed. But water is a perennial problem in our schools. Toilets are a perennial problem. I think that uh, you must have, uh, the public must have misunderstood the minister when, he, when she said that uh, there is no water to be blaming the Department of Water Affairs. We don't provide uh, water... As an, as Sorry, a Minister, I, I, I didn't say she blamed you. I was just saying she said part of oh, the reason okay. for not opening the schools is I'm because sorry. there isn't water. My, I'm sorry. Re rewind. 
Yeah. I just want to ask you, um, okay. the, the okay. money... Rewind, rewind. It's okay, I think we get that clarification. You, you, you mentioned money that came yes. in on Friday. Is this from the Fiscus or is this money from yes. the Solidarity Fund? What's the source of, of that funding, of that recent funding? And how, what do you hope to use it for? It, it would, no, it would, it would come from the department because it is, the, the agreement we have is the Department of Basic Education. So where she gets the money, where the department gets the money, I'm not sure, but we would get it from uh, their allocation of uh, resources. So I assume it is from, their fiscal, from the fiscus. Yeah. Minister Sulu, thank you so yeah. much yeah. for talking to us. I was asking you in the beginning <laughs> how far that process is with Advocate Mutawu. Uh, are you able to give us a sense in terms of all the water boards? Yes, we appointed uh, um, Advocate Mutawu to oversee all the problems that we have across the water boards and also the uh, charges that we have, um, we're dealing with in the department, should there be anybody who um, finds a need to, for a review or we're taken to court, he would be able to oversee that. Uh, he would also be able to uh, respond to any questions around uh, Nebelle and what the CEO is doing there and etc. But yeah. uh, we've met several times. He's got a team of other of advocates around him. He's well known for his thoroughness. Uh, I wish he finished he could finish tomorrow, but he's so thorough. He takes his time, so it'll take some time. Um, I'm hoping, uh, hope I'm not uh, uh, too optimistic that in three months' time we will have cleared all of these things because. With each case, there are legal implications, which is why we brought him in. With each case, there's extensive investigation that still needs to be concluded, and he will be dealing with that. But he's sufficiently equipped with support from us to be able to deal with this. And in future, should there be any e issue around uh, Lepelle or anybody else, his team of spokespersons will be able to come and respond on his behalf our viewers to send us through uh, some of their thoughts or, or, or their, their comments really about uh, water provision in their areas and I'd like you to listen to some of those. Let's just read some of those out yeah. for you. Lekhasa Patla Molo saying, hello my yeah. lovely team and viewers, we as Zebediela Mahobong community, we have to wake around, uh, wake up around 3 a.m. in the morning to queue for water, otherwise you will go home without water. That's the first one that has come through. Uh, Kutlano Mwak is saying, my grandmother in Serakeziras has never had water since the fall of Putatswana, 25 years. That's a historical one, but uh, it, it, the minister referred to that as well. Guru Christ saying, it's gotten worse. Um, Romano saying, I have mm -hmm. no water for the whole lockdown in Johannesburg. Still today, no water. Johannesburg City Water is an inhumane company, not caring for people's basic rights. Let's take a look at the last mm -hmm. one. Heidi Blaschke saying, why does it take a pandemic for our government to deliver clean water where it has been needed for over 20 years? I know some of those comments, Minister, have a historical background to them, but the question we were asking our viewers today is if uh, the water provision has improved since the fight against COVID-19 started, because since then, uh, government and your department has been promising such. Are you, are you able to update us in terms of processes? We saw you going to rent water with the president, and again, they're making uh, promises of, uh, of better water service delivery. What is the latest? Which communities have you been able to get to? Which communities are you struggling with? And are you struggling in terms of uh, 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 infrastructure or facilities? Okay. Um, the first question is, did it have to take a pandemic for us to, uh, to do things differently? It has taken a pandemic for us to understand uh, what the world is dealing with. It will probably take this pandemic to find a cure for it. There's always a causal effect that provides us with a response to particular situations. We've been living with this uh, water situation for some time, and uh, every government has been trying its best to do whatever we can. We are an extremely dry country. We're the 38th driest country in the world. Therefore, one of the first things that every minister before me has been saying is, let's save water, let's save water, because it 
can go a longer way. Now, since I took over, one of the first, the first things that happened, I mean, major thing that happened was the, uh, the pandemic. And we had to find very quick solutions. Um, that, that's, how, that's how we move forward. We encounter a problem and we find a way around the problem. And our way around the problem was to centralize the procurement of water, uh, almost centralize the ownership of all water so that we are able to take water to everywhere where there is any need for water. Uh, historically, we, uh, the water in South Africa is owned by various uh, industries and entities and people. The farming industry takes up a great deal of the water that we have. The, the mining industry takes up a great deal of the water that we have. Uh, and the, for the purposes of household uh, use, the water that we get is not at the level at which we should, we should uh, be distributing water. But here is something that I want to make very clear. My job as a minister of water is to provide water security for the country, is to provide water uh, uh, provision in, through municipalities, is to ensure that the water is clean, and at, at, that there is sanitation and that the sanitation uh, collection points are looked after. The responsibility is shared with local government. Local government then takes the water from wherever it is that we have a catchment area, a reservoir, or a dam to the persons themselves. So when somebody does not have water in their house, it is the responsibility of the municipality to make sure that that water is provided for. It is not the Minister of Water. I know that the confusion arises from the fact that when you don't have water and there's a Minister of Water, therefore that minister must be responsible. No. We work through uh, local government. We work with local government. And we have been saying since the uh, beginning of this pandemic, please go to your municipality. We work with them. We've established a command center. We talk to them on a daily basis. And uh, they tell us what their problem is, and we try to solve the problem to the extent that it is possible. If there has not been any water for anybody for 25 years, then it means that, uh, yes, this government is uh, not reaching our people, and this pandemic has taught us how it is possible to reach those people. We are hoping that we have found a way in which, for the short term, we will be able to retain those tanks and uh, those Jojo tanks where they are, retain the tanks until we have proper infrastructure. The infrastructure of this country was not meant to cater for black people, period. To overhaul that infrastructure and put new infrastructure that goes to everybody is going to take us a long time. We have found that there is a medium way, and this way that we have found through the water, ran water, is an, an, an interim period until such time as we can find alternative ways of getting water to everybody. This is a historical problem. It's going to take us some time. And all I can say to our people is we're doing our best. We work 24 hours in shifts to make sure that using the system that we have, we can fill the tanks. Now, the tanks are looked after by the municipality, and, the, uh, and, and everything else around the municipality is looked after the municipality. We provide the water. But the water getting to the individuals is the responsibility of the municipality. I urge each one of them, please, to go to their municipality and find out how water can be accessed. And we've also given a toll-free number for anybody who is uh, in need, such as the ones that you have written, that have uh, sent messages to you, please to send a, uh, a, a call. It's a free a call-free uh, number center. And if they call their... their um, META will be attended to much more directly than uh, any other way. And I would want to repeat that number, if it is possible, at the end of the session. Actually, so Minister, knows. actually, some of our viewers have uh, actually tweeted that number, saying they're exasperated as at not being able to get through or not getting responses from the toll-free number. Okay, so thank you. Uh, Desri, uh, can you hear me? Okay, we're struggling a bit with the minister there, but uh, that's that's essentially the end of our conversation. Thank you so much for talking to us today, Minister. 
I, I will at, I will attend to the problem of the command center of the. Of I the just want to end our conversation with something—a tweet that has also come through. You can't do anything about it, but it's a real concern. It's from Jabba Mohammed saying, "I've been washing my hands since lockdown, and with more washing of hands because we want to be safe. And now the water bill is so high. How's that?" Well, we're discussing this with Cabinet uh, to see what we're going to do about that because we discovered uh, very early on that the city of Cape Town had actually uh, cut off water to some of our informal settlements. So it's a matter that we have to deal with as, uh, you know, the three spheres of government. And by the end of this, we will have worked out what it is that we are able to assist people with and uh, what it is that we're not but no municipality is allowed to cut off water. Please call the toll-free number. I will make sure it is operational now. Whoever it is that has called in to call the toll-free number and indicate that their water has been cut off. No one is allowed to cut water off. It is a lifesaver that everybody should be using. And on that note, we thank you very much for speaking to us this morning. Human My pleasure. Water and Thanks, Sanitation. Yes. Minister Lindiwe Sisulu. Now, you heard in that conversation the minister uh, uh, saying that the new board, the interim board, came in and uh, uh, terminated the services of the current CEO, Phineas Lechodi. Phineas Lechodi joins us now on the line. Mr. Lechodi, you had the benefit of listening to the minister uh, in terms of, she says, your, your assertions are nonsensical. What, what is your response? Uh, thank you very much, uh, and uh, good morning to the viewers. I think uh, the minister must be unfortunately briefed for a litany of all spurious claims that are made, including the fact that I am on suspension. I am not on suspension. I'm still the substantive employee of the board, which is Lebel and North Renata. But I have to take you just in summary through the sequence of events that unfolded. On the 7th of May this year, the department and the ministry issued a media statement to say I am on suspension. I immediately wrote a letter through my lawyers of record, attorneys of record, seeking clarity as to how can I be on suspension outside my knowledge. That is number one. Number two, what are the claims that are leveled against me, the allegations? Three, the only competent body that can put me on suspension upon following a proper process is the board, not the minister. That claim remains unanswered today, and I have a well-grounded apprehension that it constitutes an unbridled violation of my set of rights, including the very right to dignity and a right to fair labor practice. And it is also startling that up to today, the minister continues peddling the information that I am on suspension. The interim board that is spoken about here was appointed on the 29th of May, midnight. We were not aware of as the CEO. We only got to know the second day around two. But by 10, 11 o'clock in the morning of the 30th of May, they already wanted to have a meeting. As to who organized the meeting, I do not know, because the normal proper board meeting would have to be convened by the CEO in conjunction with the company secretary. Even today, as I am talking, I'm in my office going about my duties as normal. If the suspension is to come, then let it be put as if it's already there. I am not suspended. And for the talk that there's been maladministration in the belly, I mean, it's unfortunate. We have been able to improve our performance over time, and we are reporting to the minister on a quarterly basis. We would have expected that if there's anything unto what that we do, she could have picked that up. Every year we're being audited by the Auditor General. For the past seven years that I've been at the helm of this institution, I've received five unqualified audit opinions and two qualified as a result of our assets and banking. So that is my bite or my take on the matter. The claims are just uh, either the result of the minister having been misbriefed or completely ludicrous. 
And the other thing that I need to respond to is the fact that there is an administrator appointed here. We got it over the media and also subsequently from the department that there is an administrator appointed for the bell. The board met and took a decision that it is unlawful and we have to properly advise the minister that the appointment of the administrator is factually misinformed and has no basis in law. That communication was sent through by the board chairperson to the minister. So today, this you're taking, there is no administrator in the bill. The only thing that we know is that there is an interim board that is appointed, and that interim board still, the board took a view that it is unlawful and the minister has to be properly advised about the legality or legitimacy of this interim board, which advice the board has been giving over time up to a point where the board took a decision to go to court on an urgent basis and stop this interim board from performing its uh, function because this board, for all intents and purposes, has got the basis to conclude that it is legitimate, it is legally appointed by the current Minister of Water and Sanitation and Human Settlement. Mr. Lohodi, you said something there that I'd like to clarify because the Minister yes. says uh, you have locked out the interim board out of the building. And you just said mm -hmm. that you're talking to us from the building. Can I confirm that? I have not locked out uh, any board from the building. During this COVID season and uh, for normal security measure, our gates in Lepelle are always closed. So for any stranger to come in, you need to detail the reasons why you would want to have an access to our building. So our security officers, as part of just doing their routine normal operations, they had to ask people that were there standing at the gate, who are you? And those people couldn't sufficiently explain who are they and for what business. There's never been any instruction that I specifically discharge to the security officers to say stop so and so and so. Because in any event, I didn't know the names of these people. But the security officers knows no stranger would come to Lubelle unless a real reason is given and their particulars are clearly spelled out. One, for security of the infrastructure and the persons that are there. Number two, as part of managing the COVID-19 response or pandemic. Mr. Lahodi, may I ask you, who do you report to? By law, I report to the board. I mean, in the board is the body that uh, can um, subject me to a disciplinary process, including uh, suspension. And can I stretch uh, this question? You know how suspension works, my sister? If there are allegations you are, you are facing, the supervisory body must write you a letter. Mr. Lakhodi, Mr. Lakhodi, it's okay. I understand you'd like to go through that okay. process. But okay. the minister says the term of the current board had ended, mm -hmm. and instead of renewing their terms, she opted to put in place an interim board. And mm. you're saying that the board is saying that the new interim board has, is unlawfully put in place. That which is which board is at play at this point? Okay. There is a board that was appointed in 2016. Whose term has come to an end? And I'm still coming there. It runs for a period of four years. And by law, Section 35, Fred, which is one of the Water Services Act, the minister is empowered to reappoint the board. So and she's, she's April exercising those year, powers. Can I explain further? During April this year, minister issued the letters of reappointment of the current board I'm talking about, not this interim She month. says it was a one-month extension. No, no. In May, she said continue with the performance of your responsibilities and continue giving water to the communities. Those are documented. That is a documented decision from the minister and constitute the basis for this board to say we are a legitimate, properly appointed board in terms of the law. In the eyes of the law, there isn't any provision which empowers the minister to appoint what you call an interim board. More so after she took a decision to reappoint the current board, which decision, yes, it is based on and premised on the law. 
Have you so gotten, that is the situation you're sitting with. Have you gotten permission from the board that you say you report to, to go head to head with the minister, as you're seemingly doing now, taking her uh, to the courts? No, no, I'm not going head to head with the minister, and that is uh, the clarity I have to give. I'm not going any head to head with the minister. I'm just convinced there are things we are not seeing uh, the same way, and I'm on record having written a number of letters to the DG, to this board. The board having written a number of letters from the chairperson to the minister, advising on a host of these issues that I'm raising, I'm raising currently. There is no head to head engagement with the minister. So let's bring the conversation to the uh, population of the province who are out of water um, at this time during COVID-19 when there is a, a big need for water and your offices, that is the big provider of water in the province, your offices are closed, you have security people at the gate, uh, you are not at the office, you are fighting with the minister. What happens to the action of water provision in Limpopo, in your region, in Lipali? Can I correct you? I'm not fighting with the minister, but this is what is happening in terms of the water provision. The states, the information that you obtain from the states says not less than 82% of the population of Limpopo has access to water. But of course, that balance uh, between 100 and 82 percent is still huge. It's not something that can make us have peaceful sleeps at night. What are we doing? Together with the municipalities, we've taken a decision to identify on an accelerated basis areas where we can drill and equip uh, boreholes, where there isn't any source that we can, as of immediate, use to get water to the people. That's where the ministerial intervention in terms of the tankers and trucks is coming in handy. And the ministerial intervention, I must indicate, was an augmentation of what was already obtaining on the ground by the municipalities in conjunction with Lepelle, meaning tracking water to the communities which do not have an access. Limpopo is generally a dry area just as is many other provinces in the country or Eastern Cape and uh, KZN, we haven't got enough water sources to feed our communities with water without any interruption. Hence, the reliance now is going to be on the groundwater. This is where we are. And the fact that my head office is closed, it's not a permanent shutdown. It's just a closing for security purposes. Not that Libella is not in operation. I've got nine other satellite offices where we are actually pumping the water. The offices in question here is the head office, which just as a way security operation measure. It has to be closed so that we are able to monitor the access. Let me just ask you a final question. In the seven years that you say you've been there, why has the water provision situation not improved? No, it has drastically improved, I can tell you. When I say the 82% that we, we are talking about, we took it from 78 up to the current uh, 82 as per the state's information. And we continue to take measures to make sure that there is 100% uh, or uh, the coverage that is as wide as it is possible if resources were allowing. There are lesser dams than there are. There is a population size and the population growth in the, in the province. That's the problem that we are facing. Secondly, the other challenge is the infrastructure that has been laid out for water provision. It was for a limited number of people in the past. So those are the challenges that we are working on, that the population as it grows has to talk hand in glove with the infrastructure development and expansion so that the water can reach all the, the citizens of the Limpopo province. So how far is the process, uh, your process of approaching the courts, and how do you hope for that to unfold? Yeah, it's the broad process of approaching the court. It shouldn't be reduced to my person. I think around June uh, we will be getting a, a court uh, date where we can get the settlement of uh, some of these disputes that 
we are currently having. And I don't think court processes should be seen by who's saying if there's an enmity or adversity between uh, the minister and the board. We just want an organ of state charged with the responsibility of settling disputes to come and help us resolve these matters. matters. Thanks for making the time to talk to us this morning. Pardon? Thanks for making the time to talk to us this morning. The pleasure is all mine. Phineas Lohodi, uh, he says he's the current CEO. The minister says he's the suspended CEO of uh, Le Palais Northern Water in Limbobo. Let's take a break. You're watching the agenda.